Welcome. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or, or evening, wherever you uh, you happen to be joining us from. Uh, I'm Kander David Mintz from the Center for Prayer and Spirituality at uh, at B'nai Jeshurun, and it's a uh, it's such a privilege to uh, welcome you all all back. For those of you who are with us uh, before Purim for another um, preparation for um, for a holiday, a preparation for for Pesach with uh, with Beit Torah Ta. Um, Tamar Biala and Yael Karanek, who are uh, who are with us today to to lead a, an exploration of the the Pesach narrative, the the narrative of, of Exodus through a regendered lens, and see how that that opens our our understanding and uh, kind of shows us maybe some some blinders that we may have may have had to the story and how we can understand it in a in a new way. Truly, um, truly an amazing learning that we're in for um, in for today. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us and Tamar and Yael, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Welcome everyone. Welcome uh, uh, BJ community, but welcome Beit Torata community. It's wonderful to have this joint event. <laughs> Osho is joining us from Germany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's it's really great to be here again and to do, this is actually the first time we're doing this kind of Passover exploration. Um, and we integrated elements from uh, Torah Ta and elements from the Haggadah, so we kind of get into the spirit of the holiday. Uh, just a few words about uh, Bet Torah Ta. In 2016, I started rewriting the Torah, flipping the genders of all the characters because I felt a really deep need for having a book in the sacred language that I was raised in that speaks directly uh, to a women's experience or, co or codifies, you know, places women in the center of the story in relation to the divine. And um, it took about four years to do the first draft, and then Tamar joined me, and we really kind of got deeper into it. Tamar you know, comes from scholarship in Tanakh, and um, so we've been doing that, and it's been pretty amazing what has come out of that. Um, so um, this year we're launching the Humash. Um, we already launched three three books. Um, and then uh, we translate into English as we go as we as we go along. Um, so our really first, you know, it's a, it will take a few years, but our first goal is to get the Humash both in Hebrew and in English translated and on the website. So um, this is super exciting, and um, we um, we do weekly um, lessons. We have the weekly lessons we study usually Genesis. Um, and um, various events like this one. So, um, Tamar, should we start the slideshow or you want to say a few words before? Yes, maybe I will say that, uh, like Gail said, we will read some uh, regendered paragraphs from the Haggadah and some um, regendered paragraphs from Exodus. So we don't have Exodus Mamash uh, and the Haggadah, but we did want the, you to know Musha, because how can we talk about it and not read about her birth? So, so um, and we will end in the end with some song and uh, Tehillot. Uh, in the Hallel, we also flipped. Uh, so everything will sound weird. It's fine. Um, maybe the only thing that I will ask you is to place yourself a little bit like a child. Mm -hmm. If you grew up on this, uh, what were you today? <laughs> so uh, let's give it a try. And you shall tell your daughter that day it is because of what Tehovah did for me when I left Metzerot. Um, Maybe we'll mention that um, Shem HaKodesh, the Hashem HaMeforash, the most holy name of the divine in Torah is Tehovah. Instead of Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, um, we uh, changed the Yud for Taf, because um, yud hey vav hey means uh, something in the future, presence in the future. Um, so, it begins with yud. 
and uh, fem uh, femininity in uh, in begins with love. So, to save and uh, the divine is Tehova. You saw that before. And the Metzerot is Mitzrayim. Uh, now the land of Egypt is Metzerot. It has to do with women causing narrowness or causing problems, Tzerot. Uh, so it's in the feminine, um, something narrow. Mm -hmm. um, who would like to read the English? Um... Lorraine? Okay, Lorraine will read the English, okay. So I'll read the Hebrew. בכל דור ודור חייבת אישה לראות את עצמה כאילו היא יצאה ממצרות, שנאמר, בגדת לביתך ביום ההוא לאמור, בעבור זה עשתה תאהובה לי בצאתי ממצרות. לא את אמותינו בלבד גאלה הקדושה ברוכה היא, אלא אף אותנו גאלה עמהן, שנאמר, ואותנו הוציאה משם למען הביא אותנו לתת לנו את הארץ אשר נשבעה לאמותינו. In every generation, a woman is obligated to see herself as if she had come out of Metzorot, as it is said. You shall tell your daughter on that day, it is because of this that Tehovah did for me when I left Metzorot. The Holy One, blessed be she, redeemed not only our mother from Metzorot, but she redeemed also us with them, as it is said. It was us that she brought out from there so that she might bring us to give us the land that she swore to our mothers. So, um, Tehova um, has a maternal relationship with her daughters, uh, the daughters of Tisraela, and it's all matrilineal um, uh, way of passing uh, a law or um, uh, everything in the in Torata passes through women. Um, they receive the word and they pass it on to the to their daughters, but um, also whenever you see a plural in feminine, many times it includes men too. So uh, we are all, we all came out of Metzerot, but it's all in the feminine. Tamar will take us through the Seder run of show. So again, um, just imagine that this is the first song you would heard all your life around the seder table. Kadshi rachatsi karpas tachats magida rachza motzi amatza maron korechet shulchan orechet. צפונה ברכי, הללי נרצת. to read this one. I'll read the Hebrew first. מתחילה עובדות עבודה זרה היו אמותינו, ועכשיו קרבתנו המקום לעבודתה שנאמר, ותאמר תהושי אל כל העם, כה אמרה תאהובה אלוהות ישראלה, בעבר הנהר ישבו אמותיכן מעולם. תרוח אם הם רמה, ואם נחבר, ותעבודנה אלוהות אחרות, ויקח את אמכן, את אם רמה, מעבר הנהר, והולך אותה בכל ארץ כן עונה. והרבה את פרי ויתנה, ואתן לה את תצחק, ואתן לתצחק את תעקב ואת עושה. ואתן לה עושה את הר שעירה לרשת אותו, ותעקב ובנותיה ירדו מצרות. Tisra'ela, over the river your mothers dwelled since forever, to Ruach, the mother of Emrahama, and the mother of Nechavra, and they worshipped other goddesses. And I took your mother, Emrahama, from over the river, and I made her walk through all the lands of Kenona, 
and I increased her fruit of the womb, and I gave her tzitzhak, and I gave tzitzhak to Akod and Osa, and I gave to Osa Mount Sira to inherit it. And Ta'akov and her daughters went down to Metzirot. ברוכה שומרת הבטחתה לתישראלה, ברוכה היא. שהקדושה ברוכה היא חישבה את הקץ. לעשות כמו שאמרה לאם רעמה אימנו בברית, בברית בין הבתרים, שנאמר, ותאמר לאם רעמה, ידוע תדעי כי גרה תהיה פרי בטנך וארץ לא להן, ועבדון ועינו אותן ארבע מאות שנה, וגם את הגויה אשר תעבודנה, דענה אנוכי. I, I didn't realize I was still reading. Blessed be she who keeps her promise to Tisrela. Blessed be she, since blessed be she calculated the end to do as she said to Emrahama, our mother, in the covenant between the slices, as it is stated. And she said to Emrama, no, you shall know that your fruit of the womb will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they will enslave them and afflict them 400 years. And also that nation for which they shall toil will I judge, and afterwards they will go out with much profit. Okay. Look to the slide before and go through the chat. Um, so this piece uh, is, a, in short, in brief, uh, tells us a, a history that um, is new. <laughs> um, it's a history of a, 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 her story of uh, the Jewish women, I don't know how to call it, uh, the Jewish uh, daughters of Israel that uh, are alternative history and perspective. Um, so we hear a lot about our mothers and uh, we hear new names. I, um, maybe you figured out yourself who are who, who is who, Tehoshi is Yehoshua, um, Em is used to be Abraham and now it's Em um, Teruach is her mother, it used to be Terach, now it's Teruach. Every time we change the Hebrew name, we're trying to enable a meaning uh, to pop up uh, from there. The same root, many changing the Nikud, um, but just shaking it a little, enable a fresh look at the meaning, not just at the name. Mm -hmm. so, so, Teruach is future yeah. spirit, a, a future wind. Um, and Emrahama is high mother. And Teruach was the mother of two daughters, Emrahama and Nechvar, which used to be Nachor, and we uh, put the Nikud as Nechvar. Nechvar means something made clear, something became clear, something is understood. So uh, we see that the mother had the spirit and she managed to inherit something different to her daughters, something new. And she uh, it's her idea to take the girls towards Ken Ona. Ken Ona used to be Kna'an in Torah and we call it Ken Ona. Ken Ona means she says yes. She answers yes. This land is that will become Israel later. Uh, Kna'an is the is the place that says yes to existence or yes to the divine. Um, it's an ideal place. Uh, to be open, to be um, able to live totally. So uh, she mentions the promise to the um, the mother, Emrahama, and then the daughter the, and the granddaughter, Titzchak and Taakov, and Osa is Esav, is Taakov's twin. Now there are two girls, Taakov and Osa, and all the stories that, between them. And uh, But eventually they found themselves in Metzerot, what that used to be Mitzrayim, it's the place of narrowness by women. In the next slide, um, 
uh, we recall the promise of Tehovah to Emrahama in the covenant between the slices, Brit Ben Abitarim. Um, and we can see that her name begins there in the quote as Emrama. At the beginning, um, her name is Emrama, and then she gets the hey and she becomes Emrahama. Like Avram turned to Avraham, so Emra, Emra, Emrama becomes Emrahama, and her man, Sar, becomes Sahar. Uh, what's beautiful in this is that Sahar uh, means the moon. So now the moon is uh, doing with masculinity. Uh, it's the man of Emrama. He presents the moon. Um, so uh, in that covenant, the future was told to Emrama. Um, we live in a world. This this theology, funny. Today we can call it post Holocaust theology because it knows that the world is not ideal is not optimal um there is a uh, sincerity tehovah tells emrama how the future is going to look and, Emr and emrama is taking upon herself um to, to go through this because she is broken and painful go to the next slide um, who would like to read in English? Elise, is that your hand for reading or you have a question? No, I just thought I would volunteer to read. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so you can read. Um, I'll start with the Hebrew. V'telech isha mi bet levia v'tikach et ben levia. V'tahar isha v'tel et bat v'yere ota ki tovahi v'yitzpena shlosha irechi. V'lo yachol od atzvina v'yikach la tevat gome ויחמרה בחמה ובזפת, ויישם בה את הילדה, ויישם בסוף על שפת התיאור. ויתעצב אחיה מרחוק לדעה מה יעשה לה. וירד בן פרעה לרחוץ על התיאור, ונעריו הולכים על יד התיאור. וירא את התיבה בתוך הסוף, וישלח את זרועו ויקחיה. A woman of the house of Levia went and she took for a man the son of Levia. And the woman conceived and bore a daughter. And when he saw that the daughter, daughter was good, he hid her for three moons. And when he could no longer hide her, he made for her a wicker ark and caulked it with resin and pitch. And he put the girl inside and laid it among the reeds by the bank of the Tor. And her brother stood guard at a distance to see what would befall, befall her. And the son of Para came down to bathe in the Tor, and his lads were walking along the Tor, and he saw the ark among the reeds and sent his servant to fetch it. ויחמול עליה ויאמר, מילדות העבריות זאת. ויאמר אחיה אל בן פרה, האלך וקראתי לך איש מנק מן העבריים, ויניק לך את הילדה? ויאמר לו בן פרה, לך, וילך האלם, ויקרא את אבי הילדה. ויאמר לו בן פרה, הלכה את הילדה הזאת, והניקה לי. הניקה לי, ואני אתן את שכרך. ויקח את האיש את הילדה, ויניקיה. ותגדל הילדה, ויביאה לבן פרעה, ותהי לו לבת, ויקרא שמה משה, ויאמר כי מן המים משיתיה. So, um... Oh, hold on, Tamar, there's okay. one in English. One more? Elise, yeah. Yeah. סליחה, סליחה. And he opened it, and he saw her, the girl, and hear a maiden crying, and he felt compassion towards her, and he said, this is one of the Hebrew girls. And then her brother said to the son of Para, shall I go and get you a man nurse from the Hebrews to nurse the girl for you? And the son of Para said, go. And the lad went and called the girl's father. And the son of Para said to him, take this girl and nurse her for me and I will give you your wages. And the man took the girl and nursed her. 
and the girl grew and he brought her to the son of Para and she became his daughter. And he named the girl Moshe and said, because I drew her out of the well. Okay. So um, we have limited time. We wanted to share this with you, but I will mention that uh, in the chapter before, um, the, the Exodus begins with a list, the names of all the daughters of Taakov, the 12 uh, tribes, they're all feminine, uh, the 12 daughters of Taakov uh, coming down to Metzirot, and then we hear about uh, the new queen, Para, and her uh, new laws um, to kill all the, you know, we all know the, the story, it ends with uh, the demand to kill the daughters, because daughters are very precious. If you read all um, uh, Bereshit, all Genesis, you will see how precious girls are and how uh, the fathers are desperate to have daughters to justify their existence and uh, get some room in the uh, in the system. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. And and uh, so um, the next uh, story is uh, after the story of the Meyaldim Haivriim. The um, I forgot how to say it in English. The birth. Um, no, the midwife. It's called midwives. So, but so the male. After the story of the male midwives, uh, we reach uh, the story of uh, the birth of Musha. So again, we see the relationship between fathers and daughters, and uh, this older brother will become a father one day. These are the people who take care of children in Torah the male in the house. So a few interesting things here is that where do they put the little girl, this precious daughter? They put her on the bank of the Teor. We changed the name of the Nile from the Yeor. Yeor in Hebrew means he will either see um, or light, it's um, like future light. It will glow. Yeah. Um, and, and we change it to the female, to the feminine language. So it's she will uh, glow and uh, have light. Um, and her brother looks uh, from afar, uh, taking care of her. And who's coming down? The son of Para with his lads, his boy, his male servants. Um, and who, what does he do? He sends his, we call it uh, Zroa. Do you see the last uh, sentence in the Hebrew? Et uh, Zroa veikachea. In the in Torah, the uh, daughter of Paro sends her Ama. Ama is both uh, maid uh, and also her arm. So we named all the maids uh, instead of Ama in Torato, in, in Torata, we have Zroa. These male servants uh, uh, are named Zroa, which also mean arms. So we, we don't really know. Um, did she did he the, the prince uh, touched the ark himself or sent his Zroa, his uh, servant, but he cares, he's curious and he's then we see that he is also empathic. Uh, so in the next slide, um, he see that it's uh, the girl. He recognizes that she's uh, Hebrew. Uh, Midrashim should be written about this. How did he recognize that? And uh, her brother pops up and uh, offers to bring a man, a nursing man, a Hebrew nursing man. So what does it mean, uh, nursing man? After, uh, this is already the second book in Torah. In the first book, we have heard already about men nursing. And after one or two stories, the meaning of nursing is changing lahanik. And it just means feeding a baby or taking care of a baby. 
So we kept it because we were surprised to see how quickly uh, you get, we adjust uh, to this verb, using this uh, verb for the male. And um, and these are the, the folks that take care of babies in their young age. So he's bringing his father and uh, the prince uh, agrees uh, with the father that he will take care of this little daughter. And finally, when she's being brought to the palace, she's named Musha. Um, and she's going to be a great, great heroine in uh in Torata, uh, many of us already read many stories of, of her. Uh, you're all welcome in your spare time, not before Pesach, uh, to our website uh, to read. All Exodus is there uh, in Hebrew, and we're working on the English uh, translation. Uh, Ken. I want to answer a question regarding the crying maiden. Um, so in Hebrew, um, it, starts as, it starts as a... Um, um, it started as a daughter, the, um, it doesn't say babe, it says daughter, and then it says yalda, uh, which translates usually to kid, but also daughter, and then it says na'ara, which translates to maiden, uh, but na'ara has to do with the verb to wake up, li, 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 eh, to, li, li, to shake and to wake up, so I, I think na'ara here is more than it's maiden, it's suggest the kind of state in which the baby was. She was in a, in a state of uh, awakening or shaking or, you know, what would a, a screaming baby would do would be like. But at the same time, there is the idea here, an underlying idea that the father is taking the daughter. The, the, we know it's not any daughter. This is going to be, this daughter is going to, to do great things. And she's put in that little teva. The only other time we hear the word teva, ark, uh, is uh, with the story of uh, Nocha and the ark. So this is a second. And when you read the word teva the other way, you get habat, the daughter. So it's this potential that is packed there and sent and the river of future light to be raised by the son of Para. Right, so there's all these all these really interesting elements here uh, of light and potential uh, that is coming down uh, this river. I will also um, uh, suggest for people who are getting interested in the fatherhood in Torata to check in the library of our website um, in the paragraph in the under um, Haftarot. There are interesting stories um, of, uh, we learned them uh, this year together. Uh, one of them is the story of the Ha'ish um, Hagadol Mishunim. It's uh, the story of the father that used to host the prophetess um, Elatish E. And uh, she gave him uh, a daughter. Um, it, it's not this one. It's uh, Which one is it? I forgot. Uh, okay. Never mind. It's uh, instead of Haisha uh, Hagdola Mishunem, there is the Isha Gadol Mishunem who gets a daughter, and then she she's dying, and he runs to the prophetess and forces her to bring the uh, daughter back to life. And the other story is what Yael uh, showed us is the. Um, story of the two fathers two fathers of two baby daughters fighting in front of uh, the queen Shl uh, shloma um so we all know the story well, how it's gonna end but it sounds very different when it's two fathers uh, fighting over the daughter and uh and the queen um solves the and by the way these two fathers are also male prostitutes so it complicates the whole story from the gender perspective very very fascinating but we see that this is the um, uh, motif in all the bible uh, that fathers care dearly for their daughters uh, we will meet the oh, we'll meet it 
in, in Torata. We will meet it uh, in the end today in the specific uh, some. Uh, uh, Mark, you don't, don't, don't reveal all the goods. Tov, tov, tov. <laughs> <laughs> don't give it away. I have a nice little. But, um, the relation, the um, uh, tensions or the, the, the magnetic field where Torata is working is mothers and daughters relationships a lot either between the divine and uh, the daughters of Tisraela, or now we see that the imagery goes on, uh, or not imagery, um, the matrilineal line goes through the girls. So the threat um, uh, is to kill the girls. And these are mothers, women, that are going to kill daughters and this is going to be you know our last uh, makkah and we have to ask ourselves and we'll talk about it later in the conversation how does it feel that the whole story on the one hand we are there to receive uh, the the word and to be responsible for everything on the other hand uh what torata offers is a similar narrative to um, a little bit, uh, not a little bit, uh, it's based on a narrative that women didn't write. Um, so what do we do with these uh, murderous uh, attitude towards solving problems? Exodus 12. Um, anybody else would like to read Hebrew? Happy to read. All right. Uh, and uh, who would like to read the English? I can read the Hebrew. Okay, so uh, you'll read the, Nurit, you'll read the next Hebrew. Tamim will read the, the Hebrew, you'll read the next Hebrew. Uh, and um, uh, Hannah, how about reading the English? Okay, awesome. Let's sure, start sure. with you. Um, the Hebrew. <laughs> התובה הקטה כל בחורה בארץ מצרות מבחורות מבחורת מבחורות פרה היושבת על כיסא עד בחורת השבי אשר בבית הבור בכל בחורת בהמה ותקם פרה לילה היא בכל עבדותיה בכל מצרות ותהי צעקה גדולה במצרות כי אין בית אשר אין שם מתה ותקרא למשה ולאהרונה לילה, ותאמר, קום נאצנה מתוך עמי, גם אתן, גם בנות ישראלה, ולכנה עבודנה את תאובה כדברכן. that Tehovah striked all the firstborn women in the land of Metzorot, from the firstborn of Parah, who sits on her throne, to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn cattle. And Parah rose up in the night, she and all her maidservants and all the Metzorotite, Metzorotites. And there was a great cry in Metzorot, for there was not a house where there was not one dead woman. And she called for Moshe and Aronah by night and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the daughters of Tisraela, and go serve Tehovah as you have said. Wait. Oh, no, let's wait. This is the next chapter. So, Tamar. Can, um, I think we should more um, just take another look at this slide and just um, feel uh what do we feel when we read it i think it's quite uh clear what the story is um so maybe you can just imagine the sounds and the look um and we will ask ourselves do we feel the same do we feel different how do we feel with the feeling the same or feeling different Um, there's one interesting thing about um, it's when it says "vatakam para laila," uh, where we translate and "para rose up in the night." Vatakam um, para it doesn't say in the night actually. It says uh, and para rose up night. 
So it's like as if uh, Para created the night, and then, or um, and then in the next uh, verse, Vatikra um, Moshe Laila. Again, Laila. it's that kind of you know, um, um, as if she's creating the night, and it's in the night that this kind of you know work of getting out of something has the most energy because it has the most desperation in it. As we know from our lives, whether it's the actual night or you know the spiritual or mental emotional night, it's huge fuel for getting out of uh, uh, you know moving from one situation to another. It also presents a kind of very uh, black and white, you know, good and evil contrast because you have the old that eventually is going to be a source of light, um, or started out as a source of light, and then you have the night here as mm -hmm. the source of eventually exodus but it's in this in these verses it's kind of you know the evil component mm -hmm. i thought it was interesting you know um when the war in ukraine started you heard the old line about how if mothers were in charge of the world there'd never be war and um i have to say in being in Tawata, being immersed in it first of all not all women are mothers and we don't also speak about what it would be like to have God be a woman so or feminine. So that that's also different. You know, a God is different than a mother and a God is different than a woman. Uh, it's a different being in existence. It's kind of this concept of all powerful. So, you know, ascribing feminine to an all powerful being is, 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 you know, transforms it because it's feminine, but at the same time, it's kind of which is, you know, are we Jewish Americans or American Jews? So it's like, is God, is Tova a God first, a feminine God? Because that really in many ways dictates um, our perception of power that we attribute to an all powerful being. And then which, you know, if, if that comes first, then the feminine gets a secondary. Um, Mima, hold, hold your thoughts. And we'll, because we will start the conversation once we get no through problem. the, yeah, because yeah, there's so much to say, um, yeah. but thank you. But hold, hold on to your thoughts. Um, one, one last thing on this slide is the, the first verse, everyone there is in the female. Uh, all the women that will be killed that night are from the highest, um, the, um, the, the one on the throne uh, to the, uh, the one in the captive. And uh, it reminds me that one of the first texts I read of Torah that Yael sent me a few years ago was uh, Megillat Mordechai. And there, there is the word achashtraniot, achashtarpaniot, uh, all these uh, uh, women uh, moving the letter um, all over the queenship uh, of Achashverosni, that you can kill the Jews, the Jews can protect themselves. Just those ladies that are running on the mirrors in Torata. Um, and that was the most fascinating thing to me in the whole thing, that women can do everything, everything. So here too, the, we, there are women in all the food chain, in, in everywhere, in, in, the, in, in all the spheres. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, so Nurit, you have the... Vatet Moshe et yada al hayam, vayashav hayam lefnot boker leitano, umetzerot nasot likrato, vatenaer tehova et metzerot betoch hayam. Vayashuvu hamayim vayachasu et harechev ve et aparashot, lechol chel parah, habaot achrehen bayam, lo nishara bahen ad achrat. ובנות ישראלה הלכו ביבשה בתוך הים, והמים להן חומה מימינן ומשמאלן. ותושה תהובה ביום ההוא את ישראלה מיד מצרות. ותראה ישראלה את מצרות מתה על שפת הים. ותראה ישראלה את היד הגדולה אשר עשתה תהובה במצרות, ותראינה העם את תהובה, ותאמנה בתהובה, Thank you. Um, Lizzie, would you like to read the English? Sure. And Moshe stretched her hand over the sea, 
and the sea returned to dawn to its strong flow. And the Metzerot fled towards it, and Jehovah shook the Metzerot in the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the mare women and all the army of Para that went in after them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the daughters of Tisrael now walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall on their right and on their left. And Jehovah delivered Tisrael that day from Metzerot, and Tisrael saw the Metzerot dead upon the seashore. And Tisrael saw the great hand which Jehovah did to Metzerot, and the people feared Jehovah and believed in Jehovah and in her servant Moshe. Maybe you can just stare for another few seconds at uh, this slide, uh, imagining all the um, um, women soldiers um, dying in the water uh, and the uh, daughters of Tisraela, which are all the people of Israel, Israel Tisraela, um, coming out uh, alive and singing and believing. Um, and we will ask ourselves later, how do we feel with this description? Um, what do we do with women's violence, maybe justified violence? Uh, and how do we feel with this? And uh, one more word, another word that I would like you to notice is the last word in uh, verse 31. Uvemusha avdata. There isn't a word in Hebrew avda. Um, it's a, a, a servant or, or a slave, Eved, is in the male, um, and there are other words for a woman slave, Shifa, Ama, but we know that all these different kind of slaves are doing different jobs, and in Torah, women are doing the jobs of male. So we had to invent this uh, um, new word, avda, which means eved in the female. So Musha is avdat tehova. Um, I, it, the, the word avda means work or labor. So it comes from the same root. So it means a certain kind of work. So it, it's also used working, uh, doing the work of being a slave or under the divine or, or, or Tehovah or working Tehovah, the worker of Tehovah. Um, it comes from the same. Um, uh, and I would argue, Tamar, that the women are doing the men's jobs. <clears throat> okay, so back to the Haggadah. <laughs> bye, bye. Exactly. <laughs> Tamal, would you like to sing, uh, sing a few lines? Or I'll sing those? just a few lines of the Hebrew. Um, and again, let's go to the first question. How does it feel to grow up, uh, I don't know, as a girl or as a boy around the table, hearing about uh, this uh, feminine divine doing all of this? Kama ma'alot tovot lamakom aleinu. אילו הוציאתנו ממצרות ולא עשתה והן שפטים דיינו. אילו עשתה והן שפטים ולא עשתה ולא הותיהן דיינו. אילו עשתה ולא הותיהן ולא הרגה את בכורותיהן דיינו. וכולי וכולי וכולי. אילו הרגה את בכורותיהן ולא נתנה לנו את ממונן דיינו. אילו נתנה לנו את ממונן ולא קרא לנו את הים דיינו וכן הלאה and so on. Uh, so it's all uh, women against women and women have property and women have uh, uh, firstborn uh, girls who are very precious and so on. So at the end I'm going to share the link to this uh, presentation so if you want to use and if that in your Seder, uh, feel free. Um, yep. Okay, Tamar, that's it. We have two okay. more things at the end after our conversation, but we definitely, we want to, so let me share it if you want to go, let me just share the, uh, here it is, I'm sharing the presentation with you. 
Um, so if you want to kind of flip through um, some of the slides uh, for questions, but let's open now that you all have access. Um, let's open the questions and the thoughts. Uh, and just raise your hand in the in the emoji. Deborah, hi. Um, I, I love this. This was very emotional. Thank you. Um, I I do have um, a lingering kind of concern. Mm -hmm. um, and and one of you said it that we've changed the pronouns and you've done so much more. So you've done all that you've done within the context of a story that was conceived and redacted by men. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of a misfit there for me because I think that this story would look very different if we thought it through the way you have with what you've done, mm -hmm. how women, would deal with this oppression and redemption. Um, it doesn't mean that there might not have been violence in there, but I think the story would have been very different. So it, it, it feels like half a map, but the core, the content of the narrative feels misplaced now that we've changed all the other stuff. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are a lot of mismatches, but you know, and there's there are also mismatches in Torah to. Um So it's not like we're looking at a a fabric of story that you know makes sense or kind of fits perfectly into you know what we think or not. That said, uh, well, in the case of the Agada, there are many many Hagadot. You know, people really, you know, women, men, everyone, people really created their own Agada. But let's assume that we're talking about the traditional, you know, tr the traditional form of it. The To get to the the next, to the place where you're at, where do you start? So we're starting here because that's the known place. But I want you to write, we can't think of it in theory. It has to be in practice. It has to be on paper because we've been thinking about what if for many years. So Tamar and I close the what if, not what if, here it is. So, but what's the next one? So write it, you know, that's all I can say. We have to write the same way we're doing this. Just do the, do it to the next, you know, one. Today I was arguing with Tamar. Tamar, we have to erase a few uh, psukim from the verses. And she's like, no, we can't erase. It's like, we have to erase. They're dangerous. They're killer psukim. They've been weaponized against people. No, but we can't. So this kind of dialogue, you know, is very, very alive in us. So I say the only way to have a library is to write it. We don't have a library. So we write the right library and we write it in the language that we feel sacred. That's the language we need to use because it triggers these kind of uh, uh, really t like a very fine, particular kinds of emotion of reverence. So I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Just do it. Tamara, do you want to add something to it? Yes, that um, people mistake to think that the Torah is an ideal book. And what makes it holy is that it's, uh, well, it's not the Quran. <laughs> We don't have saints. We, we do a mistake when we say that people are more than, you know, are not human. And uh, it's just an invitation to talk about all the, everything in life, including the dark sides. So Torata invites us to check dark sides that as a feminist, I admit, I didn't check. Uh, I grew up on feminist, uh, I always mention it, feminist ethics and feminist theology and feminist psychology. And I thought this is going to solve everything. And this is an option, but women don't think the same. And we are human beings before we're women. And maybe we're even animals before we're human beings. I don't know what it means that we are, we varied and there will be women when they will have strength and power that will behave like this. And actually in each of us, there is this little part of a uh, little, I hope <laughs> not more than a little, that is a serial killer and a rapist and uh, uh, doing um, 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 so in, in Torata, the divine, 
you know, speaks to all these dark sides in us and uh, addresses them and touches them. And it's very hard. It's very hard uh, to deal with this. Yael taught me this expression that they, she knows from Kabbalah. We always use the expression hakarat hatov, uh, knowing the, the good and knowing how to thank for the good. But Yael taught me that there is a parallel expression hakarat hara. We are also uh, invited or called to understand how the bad side is working. And Torata is an invitation also to deal with this. Mainly it deals not only with bad things, <laughs> we should put things in proportions, but there are there's a lot of mental work to do with the dark sides in us that we don't admit. Yeah, and I feel, I really feel that Torata as Torato, these are these are narratives that are building a consciousness and identity. Um, who says it needs to? It's how can it be easy? You know, uh, it's like boot camp. You know, it's a training process. If it's a stroll in the park, yes, we had a nice day, and we're not going to remember it. But if we have to cry, climb obstacles, we're going to remember it for the rest of our lives, and we'll be stronger if it doesn't crush us. So <laughs> it has to be a measured, you know, a measured, uh, the next step of uh, challenge. But I feel that we are ready for it, that we're ready to deal with that as well. You know, we know that we can't not, we can't do feminism just from the comfort zone, you know? It has to be in all of it. It has to be the full range of what's available human behavior maybe we then we do come up with a solution of what to do with extreme violence but we can't do it from the sides right so we have to, it's like you know it's like theater we're doing a kind of theatrical exercise uh marissa thank you yes yeah. so first first i let me say that i think this is your work is breathtaking your work is inspiring and I was not expecting to be this emotional first thing on Sunday morning. Um, I have, uh, thank you, thank you. It starts and I, I'm gonna make a sign and I'm gonna put it everywhere in the house. When you say over the river, your mother dwelt forever. That is, thank you. That is just really touches me because I have two daughters who have three sons. So how do I tell this story to our grandsons and honor myself and honor their mother and honor where we came from and who we are because of where we came from? I love what you said, that we don't reject the negative. We, we learn from it we decide what it is that we're not going to do. I think that sometimes the, the voice that we hear from God in the Torah is, is maybe not God's voice entirely because we're supposed to not do some things. And I think it's, it's a challenge to, as women, to, to pass this on to our children. We make a big deal about the midwives in, in, our, um, in our Seder. We talk very little about what the men do, but we talk an awful lot about without Shifra and Pua, how we would not have, we are nothing without Shifra and Pua. They came and made, and, and made us move forward. Now changing Shifra and Pua to the two men is, is a very exciting way to think because I can say to my grandsons, you, you can be that you can be the hero. So I think you've opened an amazing world for me. I am so grateful. Thank you so very much. And I'll, I'll give it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Um, who's next? Other questions, thoughts, comments? Tamima, do you want to pick up from... Uh... Yeah, I was looking for the hand raising emoji. Sorry about that. Um, okay, first of all, really Katonti, this is so beautiful. Um, I think this is the first and might be the last moment I'm excited about Pesach. <laughs> Sitting here like a week before, you know, the real craziness starts. But um, I want to say that in many ways, um, 
we've been so trained following up on Tamar to, in terms of feminism, to think that we would be so good if it wasn't, you know, for the men. And actually in Tolato, you have the story of who goes ahead and does the Beit Mila of Moshe's children. That's an act of violence, straight up. And it's a woman and she does it and she sees it as a moment where she needs to save it. And what's interesting is in our heritage, we accept that. We accept it and we turn it around as a heroic act. She saved the day. Okay. So women are, but we have to turn it into a heroic act. Here in Tolata, not all of the violence is heroic at all. But that's the point. That's the bridge, I guess, from feminism to kind of a, a, a moving forward kind of feminism, which if we're really going to take on this fantasy that we've always had, that we're going to have all the power, we're going to have equal power, we're going to have shared power. Well, with that comes, and is violence just a male trait? I don't think so. And that's because we've been so conditioned to think that violence is really very much a male provenance. Um, I think that uh, just to touch on a very meta level, I remember um, Yael, and the first time that we did Tawata, a woman spoke up and she said the following to you. This made such a huge impression on me. And this answers Deborah, your question. She said to her, you know, there's Yael explaining gymnastics she was doing, explaining about how you know, we're going to translate and interpret it. And, and this woman looks at her and says, why don't you just like throw the whole thing out and start fresh? Why are you doing this? And yeah, Al said, this is my heritage. This is the book that my whole lineage was born into. And so I think the idea of creating interpretation that could possibly bring to light, well, what would women do when a crisis like this would come up? Some women might be violent and come up with a solution that we have in Tawata right now. And some women might come up with peacemaking without violence. But I think the point is that um, we're working with the text that is our heritage that has shaped us, you know, creating a completely new book and a completely new heritage in some way, you know, might afford us the luxury of, of being able to forget about whatever the past was, but who could possibly cut off from their past? It doesn't exist, that's a fantasy. No person could cut off from their family, no person can cut off from their roots. DNA is not just a, a scientific. And so I think working with, working off of Toato is not like, um, I don't think it's like second best. I think it's it's working with what we've been given and and trying to make it our own in the most honest way possible, which is something I really, really appreciate Tamar and Yael that you do, trying to be really honest with, you know, where we are, where we'd like to go in the most, you know, honest way of what's available to us. Um, so thank you. And Dayeno, I have to say, I just have to add this for Dayeno, Toato, what I would not say Dayeno about, so Todaraba. <laughs> thank you, Tamima. Okay. Uh, uh, Leah? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, good. I, I kind of wanted to second what she was saying a little bit. I think all of us who have, have read the, the stories in the Torah and the Tanakh for so long have internalized the idea that women are very background actors or passive actors. And with very few exceptions, um, don't take a lead role and don't act violently when things happen. And we're projecting that a little bit onto our thinking, even when we're trying to think of women as the lead characters. And we especially have trouble thinking of the feminine face of God as being someone who can be angry and violent. Whereas other cultures, and I'm thinking the, the Celtic cultures particularly, have goddess who very much in, embody battle and anger and, you know, taking up the sword for justice. And, and we need to wrap our heads around the idea that women do that too. And in fact, if women don't do it, oftentimes men are not going to. And it's something that we need to embrace as part of our path is taking up that sword for justice and applying it. Uh, uh, in a way that respects the feminine divine and yet 
deals with the realities of the world the way they are, if that means to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leah. So Goodbye. it's interesting because our uh, actually in our earlier heritage during the even the I think it was the first temple there. Um, I don't know if you heard about the uh, documents from the island of Elephantine. Uh, it's an island in the Nile uh, where there was a Jewish community there and they uh, were writing uh, wanting to restore uh, their destroyed temple. Their temple was destroyed by um, 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 local people. They want to restore it. The, they want to restore the temple for Anat Yehu. Anat being the feminine divine. So this is not, it's not foreign. To, it's, it's foreign to the culture that emerged, the rabbinic culture that emerged, but it's not foreign. The feminine divine present, and she was a warrior, Anat. Anat Asherah, war, warrior goddess. So in our, we do have that in the earlier pre-rabbinic world. Um, so the question is why it disappeared, but we need it back. So we're bringing it, we're bringing it back. Um, so um, yes, thank you for that. Uh, Tamar, do you have something in mind? I can hear you. I can hear you thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, someone said it at the beginning, right at the beginning. Maybe it was Tamima too. Um, what do we do with monotheism? I think it's a it's a big question. We're um, we're not bringing. Uh, I I don't want to feel towards Tehova uh, that uh, I added another goddess to the pantheon. It's not the. Uh, you know my what I want to do with this. She is the same God as Yudke Vavke, as the God before. It's just either a different side of her, or 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 it shakes and breaks the whole system of gendering a God um, or or a goddess. Is it is 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 Tehova is just a reflection of reality, and reality is violent, so the, so it reflects and God and feminine violence it's a, it's a big question i wouldn't give up on um on mon monotheism so quickly um i'm fine with that as long as it's a female goddess <laughs> <laughs> could be combined but um okay um alex so I, I'm not a Torah scholar in any way. I always bring things down to um, the ground. I'm a gardener. I'm a that. So in the early days of the domestic violence movement, um, I was one of the founders of a shelter, and we were training the next generation of volunteers. And we were talking about it was always that the men were were violent and the men had anger and the men you know women were describing their what it was like to see the face of their husband their loving husband change and one of my friends uh, one of the trainers said but i have that in me i have rage in me i could go to that place and it changed everything for us and in a way that's what we're talking about today to understand that we have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Alex. I mean, all of us have inner wars, right? That's, a, you know, it's, it's just what happens. Um, so how is that, you know, it, it manifests itself in various, in many different ways. Right? Um, it helps us to understand what we're talking about now exactly. to, to, yeah i think all of also uh, my my it's just i don't it, maybe i'm self-projecting but i felt that be, when i had to defend sort of defend feminism and the idea that uh, you know it will, you know women are you know will you know would be will deal better with violence it's sort of a defense because it's coming from the kind of um design of woman as if as it was introduced to me through uh a male perspective but if we get out of that and we say no it's all we, we're gonna take over the whole thing the first thing that happens is a fear 
a, a fear of meeting that place of saying, no, I'm going to take all of it. But then you start to get comfortable, actually, because it's, it allows space. It, op it allows possibilities without this constantly, you know, being in a, in a state of defense in relation to the text. We're not in defense. We're in, the, in relation to the to Terova, Elohim, the power of realities. That's where we're in relation to. Um, Liza, Liza, Liza or Lisa? Liza. 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 Hi, Liza. Yeah. Hi. So first of all, thank you so much. This is, um, I think, such important work and it's been so meaningful to me. Um, and every time I sit with you guys, I learn something new and see something new. And what struck me today in particular, um, we were talking a lot about women being the perpetrators of violence, but um, we live in a society where there are a lot of uh, dead women and in uh, Torah Ta, dead women are important. The part where there's like this huge outcry that every household had a dead woman um, just was like very meaningful to me that there is like change occurs um, as a result of the fact that like women have died and, um, and something is done about it. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. You know, it's really interesting what we we hear or don't hear. Um, it's like the the sensibilities and the filters suddenly change, and we start to hear the text. I think you know what will happen to you when you go back to Torah to, Um That will start to sound different too. You know, you'll start. You'll have. You know, it's the, the your your prism has changed a little bit already. Even if you only had a little bit of exposure, you start to, to hear different things in the text. Lorraine? An example of, of just that is, I was shocked to see that it was all the firstborn who died, not just the, uh, that is to say, all the firstborn women who were dying, not just the ones who were just being born, but presumably, as, as reading your text, everybody throughout society. So that's a whole lot of adults as well. I imagine that's in Torah to vis-a-vis -vis men. Uh, as well, but I just never saw it or thought it through. For me, it was always the new kids that were coming along. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I'd be sad, however, if we all left today thinking that what uh, the regendered Torah does is um, deal with women's uh, side of violence within us only, and not with what it means to be in power, which is not always uh, creating negative things for other people, but making things happen. And there's so many examples of that, not only on the mm -hmm. goddesses part, but mm -hmm. also on the individual women in the stories. In this particular story, um, Moses's mother and the, and the uh, midwives do disappear some, uh, and mm -hmm. men are become more salient in that part of the story. But throughout the text we read today, uh, including the Dayenu, there's just such power in, uh, in being the featured gender and mm -hmm. being able to make things happen. So that's an amazing gift you bring to our perceptions too. Thank you. So Lorraine and everyone, I, I'm curious to hear, we don't have time to, and it's not that we're not dedicating our day today to other texts, but um, you know, the longest dialogue in the Bible is the one that Moshe is having with the divine in, in front of the burning bush. It's a very long dialogue. Um, it, I think it has five rounds of uh, Moshe doesn't want to take it upon herself. She's very insecure. And uh, the divine is uh, uh, giving her... It, it, um, no excuses. She she has answer for every anxious, uh, um, you know, claim of Moshe. And if we were reading this, the Torah to, the original Bible, when it's Moshe talking to the to God, and when it's a woman talking to the mother figure, I don't know how to, um, 
And where is the insecurity sounds more natural, I wonder, because we're talking about women with uh, power. So do we get how are we comfortable? What's the process of gaining this power? How do you feel uh, in this power? So this is a, an interesting uh, test um, whose anxiety sounds uh, more authentic. Uh, maybe we'll in a few years when we get to study uh, Shemot uh, Exodus together, we'll get to this. Tamima? Uh... Yeah, one last comment. Um, you know, uh, to end on a, on a positive note, just um, that if you look at, you brought up Anat, the goddess Anat, and that we had that in our history. If you look at Hoshea, Toshea, um, it's filled with the Israelites worshiping uh, the goddess Asherah. And there's always this um, prophet, Hoshea, telling them they can't be worshiping Asherah. And they, there are many different commentaries about what goddesses they had, were the goddesses of other local um, religions, or were the goddesses their own? Was it their own? Could it belong to monotheism? Could there be like a poly polytheism, monotheism? And I guess what I want to say is that we've in our our heritage as women it has had us trying to have our own goddesses. And there's always coming someone coming down on us and saying that we we can't do it and it's not kosher. And so I think that just getting used to the space of doing this is already a huge step. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that. We need to honor that for ourselves. We're in it, we're doing it. We're not listening to someone else's voice. We're just listening to our own voices. Thank you, Tamima. I think we only have a few more minutes, right? So we have two more things for you, just to, for, kind of to wrap it up. But just before that, I also want to um, invite you to, um, you know, if you want to support the work, that's where it's on the website or write to, to us. Um, and, um, and also if you, um, if you're inclined, just, um, you know, sign up uh, to receive our uh, emails. Um, we always have, you know, the next book and the next event or the next, the first feeling we just did. And there's always this kind of first moment uh, that comes up um, if you'd like to be part of that. And so now we're going to go to, you probably already saw it. Tamar? Ken, so this is the first Tehila that we're going to sing. Um, and uh, it's from uh, the Hallel that we sing or say in Leila Seder. Um, I wanted to sing to you this particular Tehila because uh, my mother, uh, when she was little, um, in, she studied in a, a school in Jerusalem for girls, uh, Evelina de Rothschild, and she was in the choir of the girls' school, and they used to sing that uh, Tehila, of course, in the masculine version, and uh, every Lel Sedel over the years, we would all be quiet, and she would sing it, and she would really turn to a little girl when she used to sing it. She was you know, singing in such a high voice. And uh, she was so naive when she sang it. She used to go back to these moments. So my mother can't sing anymore. She's uh, sick with Alzheimer's and uh, I'll sing it. Uh, it's not the same song and I wouldn't sing it to her. Actually, this morning I, I, I visited her and I sang to her the regular uh, Hallel, because uh, any change will miss the point with her. Um, she needs to hear things that she heard already before. But this is actually also to, to her honor, somehow. Hallel Nata, Hallel Na Abdo Tehova, Hallel Na Shem Tehova. Shem 
Actually, Av Habanot Samach, it's my father, because we were only girls. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's a little tribute for them. And Tamar, you sing again. Yes, and now everyone is invited uh, to join me. It's the feminine version of uh, singing after the whole horrible story ended. Oh, see, show everyone uh, where is this kit and the website if people would like to already share for their for, the, for your yeah. own Lela said uh, just uh, yes everyone has I already shared to... the I shared the link with everyone so everyone has the link Shefagol wonderful thank you thank you Sue all right so thank you David thank you for having us uh Thank you, uh, BJ community. Thank you, Beto Rata community. Have a great Passover. And the Beto Rata side, we're going to take uh, the April, we're going to take a break and we'll resume in May with the story of the circumcision, right, Tamar? Yes. So okay. I will send Genesis you 17. various links before if you want to kind of see the very wide range of research that we went into to try and understand what does it mean here um so but and we've learned a lot uh anywhere from biology to history to you know fascinating so uh if you want to join us sign up on the website you'll get the email um otherwise have a great spring and passover um and we'll see you soon and i might meet some of you in israel <laughs>